For this week's Hidden Histories, we look at one of the driving forces behind the civil rights movement. But because he was an openly gay man, he was often relegated to behind the scenes roles. August 28, 1963. About 250,000 people gathered in front of the Lincoln Memorial for the March on Washington, a powerful, peaceful demonstration. Martin Luther King's iconic extemporaneous words echoed down the Washington Mall to the Capitol, where Congress was considering the Civil Rights Act. I have a dream, one day. The architect of that moment also addressed the crowd that day, but has been virtually erased by history. The first demand is that we have effective civil rights legislation, no compromise, no filibuster, and that it include public accommodation, decent housing, integrated education, FAPC, and the right to vote. What do you say? In less than two months, Bayard Rustin and his team organized the largest demonstration the country had ever seen. But Rustin was only credited as a deputy. As a gay man who did not hide his sexuality, he was not given high-profile roles. Rustin was raised in Pennsylvania by his grandparents. His grandmother affirmed his sexuality and instilled in him the Quaker values of nonviolence and peace. During World War II, those beliefs led him to become a conscientious objector and refused to register for the draft. He spent more than two years in prison for that. In 1947, he planned the Journey of Reconciliation, which would be the model for the 1960s Freedom Rides, challenging segregation on interstate buses. But Rustin paid a price for being open about his sexuality. He was kicked out of a leading pacifist group after a 1953 arrest when he was discovered having sex with another man in a car, sentenced to 60 days in jail, and required to register as a sex offender. But even behind the scenes, he contributed to key events of the civil rights movement, including the 1956 Montgomery bus boycott and the creation of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. In 1962, Rustin debated Malcolm X over the path and goals of the civil rights movement. As we follow this form of mass action and strategic nonviolence, we will not only put pressure on the government, but we will put pressure on other groups which ought by their nature to be allied with us. It wasn't until the late 1970s that Rustin got involved with the gay rights movement. Decades after his death, Rustin began to get the recognition denied him while he was alive. In 2020, California Governor Gavin Newsom pardoned him for his 1953 arrest and conviction. And earlier in 2013, President Obama presented Walter Nagel, Rustin's longtime partner, with Rustin's posthumous Presidential Medal of Freedom, the country's highest civilian honor.